Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing out there in Sixer World? You know, um, it's one of those games, and, and you all felt it at the end. And he makes the shot, and you go, oh, my God. It was like one of those finishes where you that's all you could come out of your mouth. Oh, my God. He made that shot after climbing uphill the whole game. Right there, we're unable to get over the hump, get it into overtime, and it ends with that. Joel Embiid is a superstar beyond superstars. Not afraid of the moment. To the point where Doc Rivers, and, and I've been listening to people all nationally all day, and they go, oh, I can't believe you would design a play for a seven-foot-two guy, three-pointer. Well, let, let's, let's examine what, what this was, right? They only had a chance to get off a shot, which had to be a three-point shot because that's all the time on the clock was going to allow you to do. So you're Doc Rivers, and you look around, and you go, who do I trust in that situation to make the three? He trusts the seven-foot center. This is what people don't understand about what an MVP is. He designs a play to free up the 7-2 center to get a clean look at a three because that's who he trusted at the time. And it was the right call. And everybody did their job. I give a lot of credit to Tobias Harris. That screen, that freedom, it, it, it went off like clockwork. And the Sixers, I, I cannot believe now this is not going to be a sweep. After you lose a game like that, you get gutted like that because Toronto really looked like they were going to win that game, and you lose it, you're done. You got nothing left. I don't care Scotty Barnes or, you know, uh, is, is Scotty Pippen. It doesn't matter to me at this point. That win was one of the great wins you're ever going to see a Philadelphia team get. And, and I'm, I'm looking at this game, and I'm going, oh, man, this would be a shame if they lost this game. They're hanging in there, hanging in there. They just can't get over the hump. And they find themselves down by five with two minutes to go and boom, right back in it. And, and it sets up. Now, the possession at the end of regulation left a lot to be desired. And I thought a key was it's a small play. And nobody can. They, Maxie gets the layup to start overtime, which I thought cut the tension. Like, they, they got the go-ahead basket right away in overtime. I, I think it allowed them to play a comfortable overtime, and it, it results in that. I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. That was enjoyable TV, man, to watch that game last night. And to see the crowd go completely silent, you see that punk Drake, like, w walking out trying, uh, it, 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 trying to, like, I don't know, hang on to and be the, the, you know, gallows smile that he had on. It, it's, sorry. Sorry, City. I know you had your moment in 2019. You're done. It's over. Tyrone, your thoughts. Man, what, a, what an ending. What an ending to the game. 3-0 lead. Joel B does it again. Now, I, I don't understand the, these people. It's funny. The national people now have to find a way to try to pretend like that wasn't special last night. There's one player in the world who could do what Joel Embiid did in that game. Switching on the guards, switching on the wings, doing all the stuff he does on offense. He's the only guy who can do that. He deserves credit. Tobias Harris, a lot of credit. Doc Rivers, a lot of credit. We can't change up now. Doc Rivers deserves a lot of credit. He, he does, and he had to listen. He had the wherewithal to run on the floor, which you know, it, it, it maybe a regular season game gets him a tee, but he got the timeout to save right. them on that possession. That's right. And without Harden in that overtime, that's the other part. You would think on paper, as far as they've come in overtime, no James Harden, no point guard, not going to work. They bear down on defense. Get stops. That Toronto offense is not good. That Nick Nurse, I don't know what exactly he calls himself doing on that offensive end, but that's whatever. And they keep on getting stops to where they finally can do something special, and then boom, that's what happens. And I just hope we don't allow – we we can let go of some of our old-school sensibilities that you just were talking about kind of, Mike. The shot – at the end, was the shot that you can get. Forget for a second the size of Joel Embiid. Imagine if Joel Embiid was six foot six, like Kobe and Michael Jordan. That's the play. The reason they get that play late is because Kawhi Leonard, because that's the easiest inbounds pass. Because the first thing is get a shot off. You make no shots that if you can't get it off. So number one is you have to get a shot off. If you want to beat in that spot, some of you old school cats. 
to go in the paint at that point and they'll never get him no, the ball. No, they don't have time to get him the they ball. Him you, the you, ball. Would have to, you can't throw the inbounds pass in there, and you can't, like, throw it, inbound it, and help that guy get it in. You don't have enough time to do that. Exactly. That was the play necessary to get a shot off. That's the most important thing. And the fact that he made it crushes the hearts of all the people that wants basketball to be played like it's 1982 still. The game has changed. It's 40 years later, and it's a glorious game if you just enjoy it. How could you watch that game last night? They're down 17 points. They're turning the ball over every damn possession. Somehow you look up at halftime, they're down 10. Yeah, they battled their way back into it. <laughs> That's what's the enjoyable part of, of what I saw yes. last night. They battled, and you know, they, in a game, it's game three, right? You, you, you might have a tendency, yeah, we get plenty of time to win this series. They f- freaking went uphill yes. the whole, the whole the game yes. and got it to the point where it was manageable. That's right. And that's a, that, I understand the blowouts are sexier. I get it. But when you're testing a team, when you're measuring a team, there are going to be other moments like this going forward as the competition gets better and just human nature. Sometimes you don't make shots. Sometimes you make mistakes. Can your team win when they're not at their best? Because almost any of these teams can win when they're at their best. The real teams, they were they played a D game last night. Not an F, but a D game. And they won. That says a lot about this the, the fortitude of the squad, the fortitude of the coach. These guys clearly didn't panic. That has to go to Doc. Doc kept those guys, just kept the oars in the water and kept on rowing the boat, and then, bang, you get rewarded at the end. And Toronto, oh, they're cursing at Embiid. They're talking about foul shots. Embiid had made six foul shots, 33 points. That's because he's a great player. Don't let this propaganda try to tell you this dude's not great. And and here's the thing. There's a lot of people with egg on their face who already voted for the MVP. Uh, Pascal Siakam was scared to death when Embiid had him, and, and Embiid took him. And, and they took Siakam right out of the game. Van Vliet, same thing. They took their two best players out of the game, and then you got, like, Ananobi and uh, Prestia Chua had great games. It didn't really matter because their big players were out of the game. And Embiid had that kind of effect. Siakam was scared to death because Embiid got him. Now, anybody doing that with Jokic? No, I don't think so. So all these people now that saw that last night and have already casted their vote are going to feel like idiots. And you should feel like an idiot. 